Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know, I'm still Angie, though this is still 4F Beauty. I've got a swollen gum for some reason. But hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Because uh, this is one of the f chip Yes, <laughs> Did you get that? For those of you who don't speak, whatever the heck that was I just said, this is another one of my brands I want to try this year. And in here, I have got items from Odin's Eye. So, if you want to see what I've got, what I use, and what I think of it, it's really you're in the right place. Sammy, this last straw is here. Which means it is officially time for you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy. Let's have a peep in here. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back. Once again, it's been a few days since I've been able to film. Basically. Inefficiency. Not mine. All for once. I um you have to request your prescriptions in writing at my GP. You can't just ring up for them. <clears throat> so I emailed off saying due to come to the end of the current amount of antibiotics for my legs, for my cellulitis with you know, open ulcers on both legs. Here's the current photos showing the progress. Please issue the next prescription. <sighs> Heard nothing. There's no point chasing it by phone because they tell you, put it in writing. Forward us the email that you sent. So I forwarded the email again about four days later saying, look, I've run out now. This is, I don't want to be in a position where I'm losing progress because this has happened before. I got left without um, meds for about 10 days and lost almost three weeks worth of progress. Still nothing. Chased it a third time. Finally got a response saying, oh sorry, we don't know why your previous one wasn't forwarded on. I'll do it today. Sorry for any inconvenience. And then I get a phone call from one of the doctors that I've not dealt with before because it's a practice. And whoever the duty doctor was that day. You have to come in so we can see your legs. Photos. Current photos. Disabled. Barely any mobility. This is why I've been sending photos and requests. No, you've got to come in. So, by the time I get in there to see the nurse, who can't issue the prescription, mind you, it's going to be two weeks. The pain in my legs has been excruciating. However, I've had a shot of Oromorph. This could be a good or a bad thing, but this is one of the brands that I have wanted to try this year. Uh, before I get started people have asked me to say what I've done to my face already. So, washed, moisturised, SPF'd clearly. Um, and then today's primer that I used is my 
Ciate Watermelon Burst Hydrating Primer because I was feeling a little bit dry today even after I've moisturised and obviously my Crow and Pebble in Blank Page Cotton for my eyes ok so in here I've been ordering bits and bobs from Odin's Eye um, admittedly a lot of them I've got from Depop because I saw them on there and they were cheaper and I'm like getting <clears throat> now if you watch my most recent haul video you will have seen this one already this is the Urd palette which oh apologies for the fan by the way it's, I'm just running really hot because of pain this is the Urd palette and to be honest this is probably the one I'm going to use today because you all know me and green actually I can get rid of that little plastic condom thing now can't I? I only keep those if I've got a very um, fragile shade um, I've got two other eyeshadow palettes I've got the Alva eyeshadow palette I know, I know, why pick up three before you know whether you like the formula or not? Well, because pain insomnia, basically. So this is the Alva palette. I think that's going to do really nicely when once we get more into autumn as well. I mean, not that I restrict myself to colours through the year, but this is very autumnal or fall you know you've got your golds your yellows your, your rich warm brown tones. so that's that one and then I have the Norms eyeshadow palette Actually, I might use this one today. I might do a combination of this one and the other one. Look at that. And that's me all over, isn't it? I picked up the Alva one first because it's the only one that I could grab. And all of these were out of stock on Odin's Eyes website. And I saw the um, the Alva one come up on Depop for a sensible price, so I grabbed it. And then I saw this come up on Depop, and it was still out of stock on Odin's Eyes, so I grabbed it. Um, and then I saw. I think it was Katie, Katie Murray, um, Lady Katie on Instagram, who used the Erd palette. And I just fell in love with the greens, so I thought if I see that I'm getting it, which obviously I did. So I've got three other eyeshadow palettes to choose from. I picked up one of their fruit blushes. Now they do fruit blushes and flower blushes. And if I remember rightly, I think the fruit one which I've got is a Slight, got a slight reflection to it, it's not dead matte but the flowers are an absolutely matte blusher but this this shade if you are cool tone or warm toned or neutral choose an apricot shade and it will suit you I've not found anybody yet from the palest of pale through to the deepest of deep that cannot wear obviously the deepest of deep would need a deeper apricot it goes without saying um, but apricot will work regardless of your skin undertone and this is the Alva fruit blusher in ripe papaya so obviously that matches that one then I've got 
two different highlighters. I picked up this Solmane highlighter palette, which is sort of um, a champagne. This has got like a bluey purple reflect to it. This is sort of peach with a gold reflect. And this has got like a goldy green sort of shift to it, which I thought was really pretty. Um, as I said, this is the Solmane, oh dear, uh, Lius Stierna Solman. Probably butchering that. Apologies to all of my Swedish viewers. Um, and then I got the Nors Mesmerize highlighter. which just look at that now the the white bit has actually got a blue sh uh, a pink shift to it um, and the blue obviously is blue and the, the gold obviously is gold so I'm hoping when you mix it all together it's gonna be a bluey purpley kind of shift to it And then I picked up two lipsticks. I picked up, they're both from Alva. Uh, this is a matte lip stain and this is a cream lip stain. The matte one is in Perfect Plum. And she looks like that. Tilt it back, you can actually see it. It's frosted glass. And the cream one is in Lady Carnelia's. Come on. Which is less easy to see the shade of. Um, the frosting goes all the way down but it's a very similar sort of it smells lovely it smells like freshly baked cake not sickly vanilla but proper freshly baked cake good right okay um let's get going shall we just pop some of these out of the way. Uh, let's pop that there so I can get this box out of the way. Because let's face it, I don't need that. Put it in the way. your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it's been crap, well, then I hope tomorrow is better for you. Right, so, this is the Urd, and then this is the Nose, which has got some lovely greens in it as well. Oof. Oh gosh the temptation here to I am gonna I'm gonna dip into both I think. Yeah I'm gonna dip into both. Why not? Because then I can try their mini formula compared to their standard formula and see whether they are comparable. Um clean washcloth ready for changing the colour on my brushes because um, as we all know I don't use colour switches anymore they are far far too harsh on the bristles of your brush especially if you are using natural 
brushes. I'm actually using synthetic today, but there we go. Right, that's a lot of leathering, a lot more than usual. I'm going to have to try and be a little bit more concise. Me? Concise? Yeah, that's never going to happen. Right, uh, this remains a teaching channel, believe it or not, despite the blethering. So I'm going to insert a clip just now which will show you the difference between deep set and hooded lids. Now, the way that makeup wears off of them throughout the day is very similar, but the application method in order to get the best possible result is slightly different. And I see an awful lot of people that have got deep set eyes mistakenly say or who are mistakenly told they have hooded lids and that includes some of the bigger beauty gurus out there. So the clip will be very up close and personal, just my eyes on screen. That's how I like to do my tutorials so that if you haven't got great eyesight or you're watching me on a small phone screen you can still see what's happening. It does mean when I'm looking down to pick up more pigment or clean a brush, you will get to see my beautiful Widow's Peak hairline, but I think that's a small trade-off in terms of being able to see what's going on. It also makes my life easier when I have to cut out sections where I have to pause because of pain. I can usually manage to do it, but you don't notice that I've cut a section out. So. I do not cut out any of the blending, however, or any of the application, and if I screw up, well, you get to see that as well. So, here's your clip. I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it, but if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So, unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now, she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. 
If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, ok I am back. I'm going to use a Voldemorphy M321 which is basically a tapered medium blending brush. And I'm going to start off in the Nors palette and I'm going to go into Dazed to start off with, which is a really nice pale khaki shade. A little bit of kick up in pan, not a huge amount as you can see. But that doesn't worry me. Oh, if you're wondering what that staining is, it's literally a dye. I was trying tie dyeing something and it failed spectacularly. And the the um, glove I was wearing tore. Long story. Boring story. Let's get back to the makeup. Right. Um, I never worry about kick up. I just use it to pick up for the next bit that I need to do or the other eye. Now. Uh, I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. Moves even more this side, because you see these super deep creases I've got here? This is on my eye was pulled around when I was 5 years old by the ophthalmic hospital, because that's the eye that I'm blinding. So, although I do occasionally utilise the windscreen wiper, you are more likely to find me using the Viennese Waltz blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back out again. What this does is it very gently manipulates the skin round in both directions, so that it hopefully, if it does fold over on itself, you manage to catch it on the way back, and you don't get those telltale white stripes or barcoding, which is a dead giveaway. So, I'm going to start halfway between my crease and my brow, and let's start applying this shade. Okay. You're going to take a little bit of building by the look of it. I don't mind when shades are like that. Um, so long as they do build, which this one does seem to be doing, which is good. Um, having a, I'd much rather have a pigment which goes on quite lightly initially. It's great for when you're first learning as well, because obviously. If you do make a mistake, it's much easier to hide it, cover it up, rectify it. If you're building colour up rather than thump, there's the colour, deal with it, kind of thing. It's actually quite a nice, it's almost, once it gets on your eye, it's less khaki and more of a, a sage or like a William Morris green. Quite liking this. 
Yes, it's taking a little while to build up, but as I said, it is a light shade in the palette and it is building nicely without skipping. So I'm okay with that. So yeah, I've been really struggling again with my legs. being stabbed all over and as soon as I lay down and obviously the side of my leg because I, I can't sleep on my back because of my arthritis in my spine if I lay on my back I lock up and I can't get up um, so I lay on my side and uh, just the weight of the leg pushing against itself on the bed, which, you know, it's absolute agony. Um, the number of times Chris has sort of said to me, why are you sitting up on the edge of the bed? And I'm like, because I was in pain, I was fidgeting, and I didn't want to wake him up. In fact, some nights I've actually just come down here and just slept upright on the sofa rather than disturbing because obviously you know, he has a long day at work so okay like I said took a little bit of building but I quite like that that's quite a pretty colour now I'm going to switch to the mini Ourd palette for the next colour and I'm going to go into Nostalgia which is this green here a bit more kick up with this one and I'm going to start just a little bit lower down And start blending that across the eye in exactly the same way that I did the previous shade, just lightly buffing it in and making sure it blends into that shade above it. I've seen a lot of um, people rave about Odin's Eye. Um, I try not to watch tutorials with it. I think the only one I did see was the Katie Marie one where she used the Urd palette. Um, obviously when people are talking about their favourites, you know, best and worst of beauty for the month, they've mentioned different palettes. And it does tend to get quite a good feedback from people, but a lot of these are people who've received it as PR. Now, I don't know if that's just me, but does that look patchy to you just there? Where's my schlail down there? Yeah, it does look a little bit... Not as patchy as it looks on screen. Oh. Hang on, doorbell. Hello? Hello?
Hello. Hello. Okay. Well, that was somebody at the front door, but then they walked away and didn't bother responding to me. I'll probably cut that bit out. Right, um, this doesn't look as patchy in real life as it does on the camera. Let me get a fluffier brush, let's see if that will help. With the blending, perhaps it just doesn't like this brush. a little bit better but it's still still a little bit this is um round the blend I think it's a beauty paper brush it's uh much fluffier as you can see Okay, that took a lot more working at than I was expecting. Alright, let's, um, let's use this big brush over this side as well. See if we get a better result by starting with a fluffy. The thing is with starting with a fluffy brush, it can take you longer to build the colour up because obviously it disperses it more. Let's repeat what I did before, pack it on with this brush and then blend it with the fluffy one. See this is why I leave all of my tutorial on screen. Um, if I do cut out the bit where I got interrupted by the doorbell, I wouldn't have been doing any blending or touching my makeup in any way. You see, if I struggle with a pigment, you see me struggle with the pigment. Now this eye moves a lot more that eye because obviously as I said it did get pulled around a lot. Are these pressed pigments rather than no it just says mini eyeshadow palette it doesn't say it's a because it's behaving like a, um, a pigment would or I'm needing to pack it on first and then blend it you can see the minute I start to blend it it's almost like it's taking away some of the colour hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, greens are a difficult colour to produce. And I suppose it could just be that I'm out of practice, but... I wear a lot of greens. And this is taking... a lot more effort... than I was expecting.
Okay. Bring these two brushes back off I just used. You can use any cloth you like, I just like to use a microfiber cloth because it's super soft on the bristles. Which obviously is what you want. And it really does take the colour off nicely. You see that that looks a lot patchier there than it does in real life but then I, I tend to find that with this camera um, it films in such high definition all right let's try a different brush tickle let's grab this is one of my Spectrum brushes, this is the I'm a Mouse Duh, the A12 from the um, Mean Girls collection. And go back into the Norms palette. And I'm going to pick up some of this teal here, uh, called Outsider. Quite a bit of kick up on that one, which my fan has blown. I'm just going to pop this in this outer edge here onto the outer third of the mobile. I can't see the hell I'm doing because I'm completely blind in the eye that is still open. There we go. Just pop some of that on. Out a third and bring it about mm, halfway along the lid, I suppose. And then I'm going to go into the Ourd palette, still with the same brush. I'm going to dip into a little bit of past here, just to deepen that corner up, just a fraction. without completely covering up the teal. I just wanted it slightly darker. Yes, I like that. So, same thing the other side. Go in with teal. When I bought these they were all completely brand new, haven't been touched by the way. If you do buy second hand palettes um, and you're concerned, if you use the 90% alcohol that you use for repressing broken shades, Put a little bit of that in a spray bottle and just lightly spritz the palette and then just leave it open to dry. That will sanitise it and get rid of anything that could be lurking upon its surface. Uh, that's true of any powder 
creams you probably could but you do run the risk of it damaging or affecting the formula of the cream. Um, I just tend not to buy second hand cream products unless I know where they're coming from as in you know a friend of mine so just going to clean this brush off and tidy up those edges look how it's stained those bristles so there's a lot of pigment in there right this is a pad just with a little bit of micellar water on and all I'm going to do is run that up the edge just to neaten that up. Now you could by all means use tape if you wanted to but the issue that I have with using tape is if it's sticky enough to stop powder from getting underneath it then it's probably going to pull on the very tender gentle skin of your eyelid which you really don't want um, so yeah I much prefer I always do my eyes first anyway now so I much prefer just tidying it up with my cellar water because sometimes I might want a more blown out look. Depends how I feel and how it looks on the day. Now, I'm going to use this to wet the brush after I've applied the shimmer pigment to it because we never repeat after me or repeat with me, long term viewers know this, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. See, you all know you're so good. Okay, I think I'm going to start off by going into the Nora palette and I'm going to grab some of this green chameleon here because this is uh, calling my name. And I'm just using a flat packer brush basically. It is a Voldemorphy, but it was in a set, so as usual, they don't tell you what number it is. Okay, this feels very, very soft. Almost like a super shock shadow. It's almost like a cream. I will wet my brush now and apply the pigment on it. Now, this ferrule is now wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the bristles that hold the glue. Or loosening the glue that hold the bristle. Losing the plot, folks. The reason that I spritz the brush is twofold. One, it tends to brighten the pigment up and give you more the effect as if you've applied it with your finger. And two, it does help prevent an awful lot of fallout. I'm looking down into a mirror in case you're wondering. Okay, dry that brush off. And do the other side. Did I say what the second reason was? I can't remember. Basically it helps stop some fallout 
doesn't doesn't stop it completely, but it does help minimise fallout. Now with this eye, because of this super deep creasing here, I have to break my own rule about pulling my lid. But I am going to show you how I do it in such a way to minimise any additional damage being caused. Alright, so I literally I pull it out only as far as it takes to flatten out the creases and I apply the pigment to the creased area as quickly as I can because if I don't do this it settles loosely in the creases and then as it dries through the day it falls down into my eye. Now you see I put my eye back, I didn't just let it spring back and then I'll just take it across the rest of the lid in the same way that I did this one but yeah, if I don't do that, what happens is <clears throat> the pigment builds up loosely in the crease and um, as it dries through the day, it ends up flaking down into my eye and onto my cheeks, which not only looks bad, but it also hurts like heck. Right, clean the brush off. Going back into Urd, and I'm going to use Luxury, which if my husband was here he would instantly go, Luxury, Comedy, mm, yeah. He loves Noelfield and Comedies. I introduced him to the uh, the IT crowd not so long ago and he absolutely loved it. He didn't realise no would have been in it. Right. Now I'm just going to apply this to the remaining part of the lid which so far has received no love in terms of pigment. really lovely. And I'm going to use the tip of the bristles to blend it in to the mat there. And then very lightly I'm just going to drag the two colours together where they meet. Just so that we get gentle fade rather than an instant solid line because I'm not going editorial today I want blended I think you could probably apply these shimmers without wetting them I think you'd get the same level of depth of colour and reflection of pigment but I think you would get a bit more fallout with it because it is quite a crumbly only the crumbliest flakiest pigment losing the plot folks uh, yeah it's it's quite a crumbly pigment so I think wetting it was absolutely the right move all right clean my brush off Admittedly, it didn't go as well as I was expecting it to. Had to work for it, but yeah, so far I like it. Now, I am going to pause you, my darlings, while I pop some 
foundation, etc. etc. on. So I'm going to have a little bit of a while before I speak to you again. But for you, my darlings, it will be absolutely instant. See you right now. Hey, my lovely ones, I am back. I used my um, Colourpop Clear Feather Effect Styling Wax today on my brows. Just going to clean that off on the microfiber cloth and then decide which colour I want to use in my brows. I used to use um, pomades but it was difficult sometimes to find the right colour and then Revolution stopped doing the pomades. Right, I'm going to go into the I'm going to go into the Urd palette and I'm going to go into that Nostalgia green, the one that I used here that was tad patchy and I'm just going to pop this through my brows because this folks is how I choose to colour my brows now it's a great way of doing it um, I mean I had been using my pink honey soap brows but I was finding that if I was getting hot, which obviously with pain at the moment I really am, um, they would sometimes sort of melt a little bit. So I'm giving this here styling wax a go instead. See how it fares? But it is a great way of doing your brows because then if you're just using eyeshadow, you know it's going to match perfectly to the look that you've done because you're using exactly the same shadow, which is awesome. So. Again, just clean that off with a microfiber cloth or I pop it back. And then we will do the under eye. Using this brush, I'm going to go into Past in the Urd palette, which is a deep chocolate brown. And I'm just going to pop that along the lower lash line. Um, I struggle a lot with watery eyes, I always have done. Um, and fibro makes that worse. So a lot of times I can't actually put anything in my waterline. But I can normally do this. And I'm getting my A12 again and I'm going to dip into Memory which is the lighter of the two green mattes in the Urd palette which I haven't used yet. I'm just going to use that just to really soften 
and blow out that lower lash line. I might grab a little bit of nostalgia just for the outer third there. Time to decide on highlight. So <clears throat> I have this one. Mm, smudge do I had to try it in really. I think this is gonna be a little bit too yeah, it's a bit too oh, that's beautiful. A little bit too icy. What I'm looking for is going to Sol Main. And then we have Liuche. Which is that lovely champagne. Stiana. Again, apologies to my Swedish friends. It's very similar to this one. So this does actually, compared to that, this looks more green. That's interesting. And then we have Sol, which is that sort of pinky shade, and Manya. lighter shades in um, the Oud palette. I've got palette. I think I might go into Pink Chameleon in the Knowles palette. Just pop that up under the tail of my brow there. To hallucination for the inner corner. Beautiful teal. Because if I use the teal here, I can use this gorgeous one here on the rest of my face, which is what I'm going to do. Right, my beautiful ones. Uh, I'm going to pause you one last time, uh, I'm going to chuck some highlight on my face, put some lipstick on, some mascara, do something with my hair, 
and I'll be back again for you no time at all hey my lovelies I am back I gave myself a little bit of a little star just here mainly because I dropped the mascara wand and was too impatient for it to dry to scratch it off so I thought I'd turn it into a little star and pretend I meant to do it um, currently testing out the Catrice True Skin foundation in shade 004 neutral porcelain and the matching high coverage concealer which I've got in shade 002 neutral ivory uh, I used the Fenty butter powder today to set with obviously I used my Odin's Eye Ripe Papaya Blush. You all know that I've just used this Norms highlighter. And the lippy is the, lip, the cream lip stain in Lady Carnelia's. Hmm. Got a swollen gum must have uh, eaten something sharp. Anyhow, what do I think so far of the Odin's Eye? Um, I think I need to use some more of the shadows to, to get a final uh, opinion on them. The greens were a little difficult to work with. But that being said, green is a difficult colour anyway. Um, so you know, it, it could just be that they they struggle with with greens. It could just be that I'm struggling with it because it's been a while since I put makeup on. Um, so far, I like what I've seen, but I've used better, if that makes sense. Um, Oh, the mascara, by the way, is the Elf. What is it? Where is it? Where it is? The Lash It Loud one. Give that a try. See what it's like. Heard good things about it. We shall see. We shall see. Um. The setting spray, of course, is Gerard Slay all day. It always is. Uh, any discount codes I've got, Crown Pebble, Gerard, etc., are in the comments. Yeah, no, they're not. They're in the description box. Um, this lipstick feels really nice, but obviously it's transferable because it's a not a matte liquid lipstick so it doesn't dry down. Um, I'll be interested to see how that wears through the day, whether it wears gracefully or not. Um, so far it's okay. Um, yeah, it, it, it's okay. Will I use them again? Yeah. Have I got better eyeshadows? Yeah. Have I got worse? Yeah. So my judgement on this one is still pending, I think. Um, I think I need to use a few more shades. See how it behaves. And also I want to see how well it wears as well, because if it if it starts to look patchy as it wears down through the day, if it wears down through the day, then obviously, you know. But, that being said, I like the finished look. So I've got a hair tip, there we go. 
fan was making it tickle my face and it was really fidgeting me. What do you think? Do you like this look? Have you used them? Do you have the same issues with me with the greens? Um, I might try using them like a pigment rather than an eyeshadow and see if that works better. It could just be that um, it could be that they've got such a high pigment content that it makes it more difficult to blend because there's less micro or less talc or whatever they've used for their their blending ingredient. We shall see. Um, yeah, we'll see. Sorry, I can't be more definitive than that. Right, my lovelies. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but they're leaving me in your feed. So it's not obvious that you've been deleted. Annoyingly. When you double check your subscription status, it's also worth double checking your notification status because mine keeps getting pushed back to personalised rather than all which means I don't get anything at all. If you're new here however, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, slightly nutty version of me today or nuttier version of me uh, but it would be lovely if you have enjoyed what you've seen and want to join the 4F family because we are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, you turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually pull their finger out and send you some. In the meantime, if you are looking for a little bit of me time, whether you are new, old, or middling, I've got an awful lot of other films you can watch. Um, tutorials, product reviews, challenges, collabs, tags. I even read my favourite poem in one of them. So there's plenty. For you to have a wander through. So basically, you know, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy with your coffee and custard cream or whatever your choice of beverage is and enjoy. Alright my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say. Is your stay fabulous? And I will see you next time. Bye for now.